The Eagles defense has ranked in the top 10 in both yards per play and yards per pass play this season, despite having injuries that have caused eight different members of that unit to miss games already, including the entire starting group. At one point, the Eagles have had to start a practice squad corner at safety due to injury. But in steps Kevin Byard, a two-time All-Pro who has yet to miss a game in his career. Byard is one of the best safeties in the NFL. His range and ball skills are amplified by his football IQ, and he has proven to be a leader on and off the field. Byard is a ball hawk, and today, the Eagles have had a little trouble forcing interceptions. He should help improve that facet of their unit. Take a look at how many interceptions Byard has had each year since entering the league. There's always some luck to turnovers, but for Byard, this is clearly a trend. Let's take a look at this interception, as it shows off his understanding of the defense, his opponent, and the situation. First, let's focus on the opponent and situation. It's week 8 of the 2021 season, and it's first and 10 at the 21-yard line. When looking back at the Rams' offense in the prior weeks, they ran 20 plays on first and 10 between the 20 and 30 yard line. So generally first plays of the drive. If they were under center and pass the ball, it was either a play action to set up a deep shot or a play action to dump off to the screen underneath. If it was shotgun, the overwhelming majority of the passing plays were quick game. Let's look at the Cardinals game. They have two detached receivers to one side with a tight end and a receiver and a reduced split on the other side. A very common quick game concept when you see a receiver and a reduced split like this involves putting one receiver in the flat and one in the underneath hook. This creates horizontal stretch on the flat defender and is a great counter when the defense likes to play cover three and load the box. Here the Cardinals send the tight end to the flat and have the receiver run a stick route. On another play, they have the tight end run the stick and have the receiver occupy the flat by running a quick speed out. Back to the Titans game. Byard understands the down, distance, and area of the field and how the Rams like to attack in the situation based on quarterback alignment. And now he recognizes the formation. Here, he shows his understanding of the defense and where the ball is going. Stafford recognizes its cover three pre-snap, so he checks from what is likely a run play into a quick pass. Byard is aware of what Stafford is doing. The Titans are using a bonus dropper to Byard's side, which I discussed more in depth in a previous video. But because of that, Byard knows that the edge defender is going to collision the tight end and appear to occupy the hook zone, which will take Stafford to the flat. Byard breaks to the flat before Stafford even declares his three-step drop and side of the field. He doesn't even look at the receiver to see his route. He knows where the ball is going the entire play and runs to a spot on the field. Here's the thing. I don't think Byard is supposed to be playing the flat. The bonus dropper collisions the tight end and then immediately gets width like he's supposed to be the flat defender. I think Byard is supposed to be buzzing down into the hook curl zone, but because of his awareness, he breaks structure. That's the type of stuff you get from great players. Incredible IQ creates a game-changing moment. Great communication and understanding of your role is a requirement for elite defensive backfields and adding a proven veteran like Bayer to a room that has 26 years of experience between Slay, Bradbury, and Roby is when you get special groups. Let's take a look at an example of a play to see what I mean. On this play against the Ravens from earlier this season, the Titans are running cover one robber where Bayard is gonna be the down safety playing the middle hole. When this play begins, Bayard is sitting patient, reading the drop of Lamar Jackson. If he takes a one step or three step drop, that's an indication that the ball is going to come out quick, and with a lot of space inside of the number one receiver, he wants to sit in the throwing window to help his corner. Lamar takes a five-step drop, which is an indication of deeper developing routes, so now Bayard gets his eyes to the opposite side of the field to look for a crossing route. The slot receiver from the other side is running one, and the Titans have an adjustment with this play. The slot corner is going to carry and deliver the crossing route to Bayard, who's going to man him up, while the slot is going to replace Bayard's role as a hold defender. Now you could argue that Bayard should be using man eyes, and turning upfield with the receiver instead of looking back to the quarterback, but this is Lamar Jackson. If Bayard turns upfield, it's almost certain that Lamar runs. Bayard uses more of a zone technique and faces the quarterback. He notices that the receiver doesn't cross his face underneath, so without looking at the receiver, he drifts backwards with him almost in unison. He gets underneath the throwing window and forces Lamar to make a tough throw. The receiver is open and there is space to put the ball, but this isn't an easy pass. Kevin is able to deter a scrambling Lamar from running while taking away a deep crossing route due to his communication and understanding of his role in the defense. Creating big plays isn't the only thing safeties do. Sometimes they need to limit big plays when the offense has an advantage. Here, the Bengals line up Jamar Chase on the bottom of the numbers with the ball all the way on the opposite hash, which creates a lot of space inside based on the Titans play call. Bayard knows this, but because of this call, which is a five-man pressure with quarters base coverage behind it, he has to honor the vertical release of the number two receiver. But he knows where the weakness of the defense is and where the offense wants to 
to attack based on Chase's alignment. Bayard pops his feet in place, waiting for Burrow to throw to Jamar inside, and like we saw with the Rams play, he doesn't look for the receiver and then break on the ball. He just breaks because he knows where the ball is going. This is a 9-yard gain by the offense, but because Bayard closes space on Chase so quickly, he doesn't give him a chance to make a bigger play. On another play against the Bengals, we saw the same understanding of offenses and how they want to attack what the defense is presenting, this time on a running play. The Bengals line up with the intention of spreading the defense out in order to expose their hand. To the bottom of the screen, the defense needs to declare how they will play the stack. Do they take a guy out of the box so they can have a numbers advantage over the stack look? On the other side, the Bengals use two detached receiving threats, which also forces the defense to declare if they're going to walk a linebacker out to cover the receivers or drop a safety down so they can leave a guy in the box. The Titans are in a too high look while keeping three over two on the stack pre-snap, which leaves the Titans light against the run. Bayard knows the offense is going to run against this look, so he doesn't even look at the receivers in the stack. He's waiting to see where this run is going. He takes one read step and gets downhill right away, again taking away space from the offense. If he was a younger player that had their eyes on the stack first, he would be late to the run. Bayard looks off balance on this tackle, but when you look at the type view, there is a huge alley inside, so he has a lot of space to cover. He's still able to force Mixon to run sideways so his teammates can catch up. Also, notice how long his arms are here. Bayard has unusually long arms for a safety. His arms are in the 94th percentile of safeties and would be in the 82nd percentile of linebackers. Those long arms show up in multiple facets of his game. Here, we see them helping increase his tackle radius. Bayard has a well-developed skill set, and that includes tackling. He has led the Titans in tackles each year from 2020 to 2022, and he's always been a sure tackler. Per PFF, he currently has the fifth lowest missed tackle rate of all safeties this season. His career average is 6.8, which would be 16th on the season, and that's inflated from 12 and 13% marks his first two years in the league. Kevin is a versatile player, and those long arms show up when he needs to play in the box as well, as they allow him to keep blockers at a distance. He has the size to mix it up inside, weighing in around 215 pounds, despite being 5'11". His length is on display in the passing game as well. He is able to disrupt tight ends at the line of scrimmage, and he's able to use his go-go gadget arms to lock onto tight ends as they try to get physical at their break points. He's without a doubt an upgrade athletically over Justin Evans, and that shows up especially in man coverage. The Eagles are in the top half of the league in man coverage usage, and adding Bayard only makes their defense tougher in that area as well. Though he's 30, he still has plenty of athleticism. Some might say he's lost a step, but he's still got plenty more to lose, and safety is a position that relies so much on football IQ that many older players have aged like wine. There's a reason you see guys like Brian Dawkins playing well until age 38, Harrison Smith still making plays at 34, and at age 36, Eric Weddle didn't play a regular season game, signed with the Rams for the playoffs, started, and won a Super Bowl. Bayard has plenty left to give. You should also take the time to read and listen to what former coaches, teammates, and media members have had to say since the news of the trade. He was clearly a leader of the team on and off the field, and it sort of gives you a Malcolm Jenkins vibe. The Eagles haven't had much success in forcing interceptions this year, but when you look at the DB room now, it's hard to think that won't change. Bayard is third in interceptions since entering the league in 2016. In that time span, Slay is fifth and Bradbury's 20th. Reed Blankenship has shown a nose for the ball in his short career as well, and the Eagles have been very close to picking the ball off on several occasions over the past four games. The turnovers will come, which is scary for opposing teams. The arrival of Kevin Byard is going to pay dividends for this defense as we continue on to the toughest stretch of the schedule.